All right, so today we are going to look at uh, collisions, okay, between uh, different particles and uh, the mathematical formulation uh, of collisions as well. So what we want to do is uh, we want to imagine uh, just two objects, okay, and let's say these two objects they are approaching each other. So you have object one and you have object two, and they can approach each other in this manner. They don't necessarily have to touch each other, okay, but what we are trying to say is that these two objects they will interact with each other okay so the the reason for interaction is something that we are not concerned with right now what kind of forces uh, are present what kind of uh, uh, interaction is present whether it's attractive uh, repulsive we, we don't care about that okay all we are saying is there are two objects and they will interact with each other okay now the interaction will be very strong okay and uh, we are going to consider that in this system the external force let's create a system like this and we are going to say that the external forces acting on this system are comparatively much much weaker than um, what is go going on inside this system where these objects are interacting with each other okay now uh, during this uh, interaction that is happening we can uh, say that uh, it's a certain kind of collision is happening between them and we will assume that this collision time is very very short okay so we will neglect that any vibrations or any uh, distortions or anything happen to the material or something of that sort you can imagine uh, a rock in outer space it's approaching a planet it doesn't necessarily uh, have to hit the planet but uh, because of some gravitational force it can uh, do an interaction there can be some forces at play and it will change the, its direction okay so let's say there is a, a rock here there is a big planet here which has some gravitational field and this rock is approaching and then because of this gravitational field it gets attracted to it and then it changes its course of direction okay so again this kind of situation is also a collision that we can consider okay what we can do is in situations like these we can use the conservation laws okay and we can determine a lot of things that is happening in the collision when these objects which are moving right so there has to be some movement so there has to be some momentum okay uh, at least one of them has to be moving right so whatever is the total momentum before the collision okay that means suppose you have uh, uh, some total momentum of two particles before collision which is Uh, mass of the first particle m1 uh, times v1 initial that is the initial velocity of the first particle uh, plus m2 v2 i which is the mass of the second particle times the velocity of the second particle initially okay so this is the momentum total momentum before collision so that will be equal to the total momentum after collision so you will have the velocities v1 f which is the velocity of the first mass after collision and v2f will be the velocity of the second mass after collision rule of conservation of momentum okay will hold in all the collisions that we are going to consider okay so now we can go into a sub category and say that okay a very special case will be when uh, suppose two hard objects uh, like two billiard balls are colliding and that is known as the elastic collision okay and again in this kind of collision you will still see that the conservation of momentum will hold okay so however there is a second rule which talks about kinetic energy okay and in terms of elastic collision what will happen is this kinetic energy will also be conserved that means the kinetic energy before collision will be equal to the kinetic energy after collision okay so the total kinetic energy before collision will be uh, by given by your expression uh, you know 1/2 mv1 square uh, and so if you have two masses then you will have two uh, terms for your initial uh, kinetic energy terms okay and uh, again for two particles you will have two terms for the uh, kinetic energies after collision of the two objects okay so this kinetic energy term right before and after collision will also be conserved in case of an elastic collision okay and you can see uh, an example of an elastic collision that we have sh shown here okay so in the top case here you have two masses that are approaching each other right so their velocities are pointing in the opposite direction okay and uh, they collide and they are uh, very very hard objects so they don't stick to each other they just bounce off from each other okay 
and in in a collision like this you have uh, like we were mentioning the momentum will be conserved and your kinetic energy will be conserved okay similarly you can have both the masses they might be traveling in the same direction okay and uh, again in a perfectly uh, elastic collision you will have some initial velocities and you will have some final velocities okay but you have to remember that uh, these objects will uh, bounce off each other uh, when they do the collision okay now what i want you to do is i want you to solve for the cases when m1 is much much greater than m2 and uh, also for the case when the m1 will be much much smaller than m2 for a generic case where the, you have one object is moving okay and we had uh, said that the second object with mass m2 is going to be stationary okay and in this scenario we were trying to figure out what are these special cases where when you plug in different velocities you will get different results depending on uh, how the mass of one object is related to the other okay so let's look at this case in detail so uh, we are considering remember elastic collisions there are two masses mass m1 and mass m2 okay now what we are saying is mass m1 is going to move with some velocity v1 okay and it is going to interact with this mass m2 and let's take the velocity 2 as zero okay now the question that arises in our mind is whether this mass m1 will move in the same direction or there can be a certain condition in which this mass m1 can move in the opposite direction okay now we don't know this we are just uh, assuming that both of these things can happen and the result that we will get depends on the relative mass of the two objects okay so let's use the first law of conservation of momentum okay and the first law says that the momentum before collision which is just m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to the momentum after collision okay which is m1 v1 prime and m2 v2 prime right so v1 prime and v2 prime are the velocities of these objects after collision okay so in our simplistic case we have chosen this v2 to be zero okay so you will get rid of this second term here and uh, your conservation of momentum equation will be simplified okay now similarly we can use the conservation of kinetic energy because this is an elastic collision and you get an equation for conservation of kinetic energy in this form which is uh, m1 v1 square plus m2 v2 square is equal to your m1 v1 prime square plus m2 v2 prime square okay and again these primes are the uh, velocities after collision and uh, these v1 and v2 are the velocities of the masses before collision okay and again v2 will be zero for our special case we are considering mass m2 is stationary and uh, then this equation will be simplified as well okay so the simplified equation looks something like this right your m1 v1 will be equal to your right hand side okay and similarly you get m1 v1 square is equal to some uh, velocities times some mass on the right hand side okay now again what we considered was that velocity of 2 is zero okay so from here you can get an equation for your v2 prime okay so if you try to isolate v2 prime uh, on one side and take this v1 prime on the other side you get uh, minus m1 v1 prime plus m1 v1 will be equal to this m2 v2 prime okay and from here you can get an expression for the v2 prime which is the velocity of the second mass after the collision okay now here what you can do is once you have this equation you can plug this v2 prime in this equation right here okay and what happens is you are you are ending up having only terms of v1 and v1 prime okay so that is our eventual goal we want to find the final velocity of the object one as compared to its initial velocity and similarly we'll find another equation that will have final velocity of the second object with compared to its uh, you know initial velocity of the of the object that is moving okay so just plug in this value here v2 prime from your conservation of momentum back in this equation number 4 and um, if you do uh, a little bit of simplification you can see that masses are cancelling m2 gets cancelled with one of the m2s there is one m2 that is left here okay and uh, if you keep solving it further you will get rid of some of the terms okay and uh, i leave you uh, this uh, 
presentation so you can check the derivations later but eventually you will get a result uh, of the v1 prime which is the final velocity of the first object is equal to m1 minus m2 divided by the sum of the mass times the initial velocity of the object okay so you get one expression right here just by uh, solving this equation okay similarly you will get a second expression which is the velocity of the second object of mass m2 the final uh, velocity it is given by 2 m1 by m1 plus m2 okay times v1 okay so these are the two expressions you get and now you can apply the special case that we are considering what if mass m1 the mass that is moving before uh, collision is much much larger than mass m2 okay so in this case what you can do is let me uh, try to uh, show this step here your v1 prime right here right you can write it in terms of um uh, your uh, expression that if m1 is much much greater than m2 then you can just ignore the m2 term because this term is so small that it doesn't affect the uh, resultant outcome here so you are ignoring the m1 uh, you are ignoring the mass m2 term right so all you are left with is m1 v1 right times your uh, m1 in the denominator okay and that is your expression that you get here okay and from here you can cancel the m1 and all you are left with that the uh, final velocity of the uh, first object is the same as the initial velocity okay and similarly if you consider mass m1 is much much greater than m2 in your second expression you get v2 prime will be 2 m1 and again you can ignore m2 okay because the m1 is much much larger than m2 so you get 2 m1 by m1 and again this m1 and m1 will cancel and you get that v2 prime is equal to 2 times the velocity of the first one okay so this is an interesting result to see right if mass m1 is much much larger than the second mass okay that mean you can assume that let's take um, like a you know a bowling ball which is very very huge okay and it is coming and hitting uh, a ball that is very very light like a, a table tennis ball or something okay and in that case what will happen is that the the uh, the velocity of the bowling ball will remain the same okay however when it hits the uh, table tennis ball the table tennis ball will go with twice the velocity that uh, uh, of the uh, of the bowling ball okay so so this is a very non intuitive result okay you cannot predict this it just comes out of the equation okay so that is your case one now similarly we can consider a case too that you have like a uh, a very very light ball of uh, you know very small mass that is coming and hitting uh, a, a very very heavy object uh, that is of mass m2 okay and in this case again what will happen is here you will get uh, ignore the uh, value of m1 okay so you can ignore m1 because m1 is very small and so you get minus m2 by m2 times v1 okay and that is just minus v1 right so what is happening here is now if you have a very very uh, light ball m1 let's say it is a table tennis ball okay and it is coming and it is colliding with a huge object you know like this which is like a bowling ball okay what will happen it will basically bounce back okay with the same velocity that it was going in the first place so v1 was the velocity now it will bounce back with the same velocity in the opposite direction that is what this equation is telling us okay and the bowling ball will not move at all okay so it will just stay there okay so that is another special case okay and one of the interesting cases that we have is the third case what happens if both the masses are the same that you have the same mass m1 and the same mass m2 and now this is stationary like we are saying and this is moving with some velocity v1 okay now if that is the case here in this equation you can see that if m1 is equal to m2 then v1 prime just becomes zero okay because m1 minus m2 is zero okay so that means this ball will come and hit the second uh, ball which is stationary this is of mass m1 this is also mass m1 both have the same mass and this will just stop here okay so this ball will just stop here 
okay and now let me uh, color them with a different color so that it is visible what is going on okay and this second ball will start moving with the velocity v1 okay so this hits this ball it becomes stationary and the second ball starts moving okay and that is the case of newton's cradle okay so this is what is happening in the newton's cradle okay you have one mass that uh, is the same as the other masses okay and the first mass is moving with certain velocity okay it collides with the masses and it stops because it ends up having no velocity and the entire velocity is transferred to the the next mass okay and similarly then the next mass when it comes back right it can uh, do a collision and it will lose all of its velocity and it will give the entire velocity to the to the other mass and that's how the newton newton's cradle uh, actually works okay what we just did was the cases where you have m1 and m2 are the same let's uh, let's go to the other type of collision which is uh, known as the inelastic collision okay now uh, in inelastic collision what you have is your kinetic energy is not conserved okay however your momentum is conserved okay in inelastic collision looks something like this where you know two objects are colliding and they stick to each other okay and um, so this is a perfectly inelastic collision where two objects they stick to each other and so they will have the same final velocities after the collision okay so in so if the two masses are sticking to each other then you they have the same velocity after the collision so you can get an expression for v final as your um, m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial that is your total momentum before collision divided by the total sum of the masses okay so to understand this uh, a little bit more we can do a simple problem okay and here just like before we had solved a problem of uh, elastic collision you have two railroad cars okay and basically in this case you have the second car is stationary okay and the first one is moving with some speed which is 24 meters per second okay both have the same mass 10000 kg okay and we have a collision that happens and after the collision these two cards they stick together and now they are moving together okay so this is uh, a example of your perfectly inelastic collision okay so we want to find that after they stick together what is the uh, velocity of both of these cards after collision okay and again just like we were mentioning before you can use your conservation of momentum equation okay since uh, second one is not moving its velocity is zero so you will get rid of this term which is the m2 v2 i term will go to zero and you can get an expression for v1 prime which is going to be m1 v1 initial divided by m1 plus m2 okay so uh, uh, again both have the same mass so you have basically m divided by 2m or you have v1 i divided by 2 so your 24 meters per second divided by 2 will be 12 meters per second okay so you are getting that once the inelastic collision happens both these railroad cars they are moving with the same velocity which is 12 meters per second okay so that's a very simple um, uh, example of what is happening during inelastic collision okay so at this point what i would like you to do is check whether the kinetic energy is conserved or not in this case okay so calculate the kinetic energy before collision and calculate the kinetic energy after collision and see what values you get okay so uh, the second object is not moving so you only have the kinetic energy of this uh, railroad car which is uh, going to be 0.5 half into uh, mass which is 10000 times the velocity square with 24 square okay and you get uh, 2880 kJ okay and the final one will be uh, uh, the total mass is m1 plus m2 okay so you have 20000 kg as the total mass in times 0.5 times the v square is 12 square okay so you get 1440 kJ okay this is of inelastic collisions where objects stick together your kinetic energy will not be conserved okay and the cases where uh, two things are bouncing off each other are called a perfectly elastic collision okay but in reality you know the, the 
a collision might be somewhere in between these two situations okay but however that situation is what you have to remember always is that momentum will be conserved in collisions okay so it, that is non negotiable the momentum will be conserved however your kinetic energy may or may not be conserved depending on the case that you are considering okay so uh, let's talk about uh, ballistic pendulum this is a very famous example of uh, again your inelastic collision and uh, this is a device that is used to measure the speed of uh, fast moving projectiles or like a bullet okay so uh, what you have is you have a pendulum with uh, a mass m which is very very heavy okay which is a large block of mass m and this pendulum basically is stationary here and it is not moving okay what we are going to do is we are going to fire a bullet okay and that bullet is going to come and hit this uh, pendulum and it is going to stick to this uh, large mass and then both of them will going to move and they are going to create this oscillations okay so this small mass is the mass of the bullet and the velocity with which this bullet is moving is v okay so what the ballistic pendulum does it is it can measure your velocity of the bullet that is moving okay and you will see uh, in a short while that to know this velocity all you need to know is the mass of these two uh, uh, things the bullet and the uh, this large block and you need to know the height to which this block is going to move after the bullet strikes it okay that's all you need to know you need to know the height with which it moves and you need to know the masses and you can calculate the initial velocity okay so let me show you an animation of what is going on so you will have the gun firing it's hard to show it real time because i don't know if it is actually moving here yeah. okay and then the bullet strikes the mass and then the bass will move along with the bullet and then they will go to a certain height okay and you have to measure the height okay so that is essentially what is going on all right so again this is a situation where uh, initially this um, large block is stationary okay so we can write down the uh, momentum conservation equation okay so initial momentum will just be mv okay and the final momentum will be m plus m and v prime which is the velocity of with which both of these things are moving just after the collision okay so from here you get your first equation all right now we can use the second equation which is the me mechanical energy conservation equation that means we are saying that after the collision is happening the mechanical energy will be conserved okay so whatever is the kinetic energy uh, that is possessed by this object when it moves from this center position all the way to the top height here right basically what is happening is the kinetic energy is getting converted into potential energy in the system okay so if the mechanical energy is conserved then in this case you have one half m plus m which is the total mass with which it is moving uh, v1 v prime square that is the kinetic energy of the system just after the collision which will be equal to the uh, potential energy that it is possessing at certain height h okay so you can consider that the potential at this position is zero and so you get the value is m plus m gh okay on the right hand side so that is the potential energy of the system okay which is m gh right so you have total mass times g times h Okay. and so from here m plus m will get cancelled and you can get an expression for v v prime which is uh, square root of 2 gh okay very familiar looking equation all right and from here what you can do is you can plug this value in this in this first equation okay and what you get is you get an expression for v which will be your 1 plus m divided by m because you are just uh, dividing m on both the both the masses okay times instead of v prime you can write square root of 2 gh okay so there you go you have an expression that will tell you the velocity of the bullet okay all you need to know is the two masses and you know what value of g is if you are doing this experiment on earth you know what g is 
and all you have to do experimentally is measure the height this is what the problem is doing now you have a bullet that is hitting a stationary mass okay of course this mass is much much larger than this small mass of the bullet okay now uh, initially only the bullet is moving it hits this mass and this mass is now sitting on a table and there is some coefficient of friction between this block and the table okay the value of the uh, kinetic uh, coefficient of friction is given as 0.25 okay and we are also given the masses of the block and the mass of the bullet okay now after the bullet hits this block this bullet and the mass they both move a distance of 9.5 meters before they stop okay so in this problem now again we have to find the velocity of the bullet okay so uh, first step is again to calculate the work done by the friction okay so to get the work done by the friction you have to find the frictional force okay so friction force when this object is moving will be uh, the uh, coefficient of kinetic friction times the your uh, normal force okay that is just this generic formula okay and uh, the normal force is equal to this uh, force m plus m g in the opposite direction okay so you can plug that value in here okay so you get the force of the friction is uh, mu of k the total mass of both the bullet and the block times the g value okay now if this object moves a distance of 9.5 meters so you have to multiply that distance to this force and you will get the work done by friction okay and of course it has to be a negative sign because the friction is acting in the opposite direction to your direction of motion okay so that is one value okay now we know from the work energy principle that the work done by the uh, forces is the change in kinetic energy okay so here when the object is moving in the x direction the only force that is acting is this force of friction so you get um, your one half uh your total mass times the velocity of this uh, combined um, uh, mass system when it is moving okay that is your change in kinetic energy okay because initially your kinetic energy is zero okay so uh, this should be equal to your force of the uh, friction times the distance okay so you can equate these two terms okay so kya ho jata hai yahan pe mass mass cancel ho jayega m plus m on the right hand side will get cancelled with the m plus m on the left hand side and from this you know the uh, coefficient of kinetic energy this is given uh, it's 0.25 you know the distance is given 9.5 g you know is 9.8 uh, both the masses are given 1.35 and 0.025 so uh, that gets cancelled so you don't need that term and uh, from here you can find u okay so it will be some square root of this value so you get 6.82 meters per second for the value of u okay which is the velocity after collision okay just after collision remember this is the velocity just after collision okay because uh, since there is friction acting this velocity will slow down right and eventually it will go to zero okay so uh, now we can again use the equation of momentum conservation your total momentum before collision will be equal to the total momentum after collision and from here you can get the value of v in terms of uh, u right and u we know which is 6.82 and so if you do that you get a value of around 375.25 or something okay so roughly around 375 meters per second and that is the speed of the bullet that you have okay